Hello, welcome to this special debate show. Face the voters, MEPs answer to you. I'm Catherine Nicholson, Europe Editor at France 24. And I'm Max Hoffman, Brussels Bureau Chief of Deutsche Welle. Thank you for joining us here at the heart of Europe at the European Parliament in Brussels. Well, there are just a couple of weeks to go now before the EU elections and we are handing over control to you, the voters. Deutsche Welle, France 24 and our sister radio station RFI Radio have been out across the EU to meet young Europeans who are voting for the first time. After all, it is about their future. They have the most to lose or to gain from these elections that some are already labeling as among the most crucial in recent memory. So it's only fair that they get to ask most of the questions to our guests. Well, let's introduce you then to our panel of five people who will be tackling those questions we have with us today. Ana Gomez, a current MEP from Portugal uh, with the Socialist and Democrats group. Thanks for being with us. And right next to her, Petra de Souto, who is a senator with the Greens right here in Belgium. She also has a, a real job, if I may say. She's a professor of gynecology in Ghent, and uh, she might not have time to do that in the future because she's running for the European Parliament as one of the Spitzenkandidaten of the Greens. Across the other side of our table, Sandro Gozzi, who is a former junior minister for Italy uh, for the European Union, uh, standing this May in France, however, for Emmanuel Macron's list. Uh, it's called a Renaissance. It's a centrist and fiercely pro-European list. And also happy to have Adina Valian with us, who's a member of uh, the biggest political group in the European Parliament and uh, poised to remain so, the European People's Party. She's also the chair of the Environments Committee, which will be very important for the discussion later on. Hello, everyone. And our final panelist uh, joining us from Germany, Gunnar Beck, uh, who's standing for the far-right Alternative für Deutschland Party, or AFD, with uh, the EFDD group here in the European Parliament. Hello there. So, as Catherine said earlier, we asked first-time voters all across the continent about what was important to them. And unsurprisingly, there was a lot of return about opportunities for young people's studies, jobs. And one of them really, really struck us, uh, Aspa from Greece. And this is what she had to say. Let them stop imposing austerity policies, aggressive policies against other nations who do not agree with their ideology. It's what we saw in Greece, but also elsewhere in Europe. Let them understand that we have turned the page. We want solidarity and brotherhood between nations, not intolerance, racism and hatred. Asper there from Greece uh, with her question, a country where uh, unemployment still stands above 18% currently. Of course, uh, there has been a lot of anger, as we know, in Greece directed towards other member states uh, for their role during the Eurozone crisis, particularly Germany, for example. Of course, anger as well towards the European Commission for its role in the management of that crisis. Uh, the Commission currently dominated uh, by the European People's Party, uh, so we will come to our EPP representative <laughs> here first. Uh, Adina Ioana Valian, uh, Asper says that uh, Greece uh, was uh, put under aggressive policies uh, against other nations. Do yes. you accept that assessment? We know that uh, this is a feeling uh, in Greece because it was a tough time for everyone there. But it's true that the uh, budgetary discipline imposed by Europe on its member states is absolutely necessary to protect people's money, to protect people's savings, to protect the economy of a country. So we do believe that in, in the end, these policies are paying back for more safety at the national level. But in aren't the you surprised, Ms. Valian, that this is still a topic for young people? I'm not surprised, and it will be like like this for a while, but mm -hmm. the, we also have to say to these young people in Greece that we increase the funding for all youth-related policies. So you see, it's not like just putting some rules, staff rules on one hand, and not giving incentives or active policies uh, or, on the other hand. So a lot of money on Erasmus+, Plus, on youth unemployment programs related. So I would say uh, she has to... Uh, to, to uh, um, uh, wait and see the results. Wait and see. And the the country mess. Portugal proved that actually some of these policies were wrong. Uh, and uh, that... Uh, the indeed, austerity part of it. Yes. yes. Mm. And that uh, and the punitive part of it. And, uh, and that indeed by uh, 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 investing in, uh, in consumption and in, uh, in investing in the people we, uh, while at the same time keeping the balance, the books balanced, 
uh, was the right way. And that's what has been bringing back uh, our youth that was uh, forced to emigrate with the austerity policies back. And uh, I think the, the youth uh, in Portugal, like anywhere, they want, of course, job opportunities, decent jobs, not precarious jobs, as it is still the mm -hmm. case, very much the norm. And, of course, this means uh, quality education, also to face the challenges that are imposed by the, the changes in the digital uh, world we so live in. So, basically, investing in Europe's youth. Uh, Absolutely. I would like to hear what uh, Mr. Beck has to say about that, because that would mean that countries like Germany would have to pay more into countries where you have high rates of youth unemployment. Are you on board with this? Well, that's already happening. Um, uh, uh, austerity is an integral part uh, of the uh, uh, conjuries of measures that's been dreamt up by the European uh, Central Bank and the Commission to rescue the euro. The euro doesn't suit anyone. It imposes austerity. The euro is on, not complete. Uh, no. it must be completed. Well, the euro uh, 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 the is far union, too. Is f the with euro the is far? Guarantee. I'm afraid. If I could just finish, the euro is far too high for countries like Greece, and its uh, exchange rate is far too low for countries uh, like Germany. What we presently have is a system whereby the south of Europe is largely deindustrialized and Germany is required to make transfer payments but to what do you ease propose? the pain. What do you propose do, for the future propose? of Germany those young been voters? A big, a well, big indeed. Benefit uh, of well, the uh, euro. Uh, we have to start with the diagnosis of the problem. That's the euro. So we want to leave the euro. We want to dissolve the, currents, uh, the currency uh, uh, union. That's the first start. And then it is up to each country. Uh, to uh, well, if you start with that, then no, that's the end also, I would say, of the European Union, of because course. Euro is an <clears throat> integral part of the whole system. And I would say that Germany is not actually paying, or because the modern policies put in place by this European Commission were, for example, to attract in, uh, private investment through the European Fund for Strategic Investment, and we attracted private investments of 200 billion, creating 300,000 uh, uh, new jobs. So it's not Germany paying for new jobs or for mm -hmm. the unemployed people in Greece. There are modern financial there instruments to create... There is certainly an impression create, for many Germans, however, that <coughs> Germany is paying for, for that. other Could I countries. Just, I mean, I'd like to bring in Mr. Goodsey, if I may, however. Yeah, of I've course, been, your, country, been Italy, twice. Uh, your country, Italy, uh, has had uh, problems in the Eurozone uh, crisis as well. You're standing on this sort of transnational list of renaissance, uh, wanting perhaps the opposite of what Mr. Beck wants here. You're wanting more Europe, not less. I want a better Europe. I certainly don't want the Europe which has made serious mistakes under, under evaluating, underestimating the social impact, the very negative social impact of the austerity policies during the crisis. And I don't want a Europe which is contradictory with itself. I mean, Germany is the biggest beneficiary of the euro, the biggest beneficiary of the single market. And it is clear that we should go back, as the young lady was saying, to the pillar of Europe, which is solidarity. And so Absolutely, we yes. think that we have to go back to political, social, ecological mm -hmm. solidarity within the European Union, because it's the only way to, to grow uh, all stronger. It is clear that uh, Germany on one side, the European People's Party on the other side, bear huge responsibility for the, for the sentiment of that young lady, which is very spread around Europe, a sentiment where uh, we have lost the idea of uh, solidarity, of the, of, we have lost the idea of the social dimension of our policies. Yes. Well, we have um, to gain back. Yes, well, just like the, to bring Greek, in... the Greek government bears the main responsibility for the sentiment of that young well, lady. Well, fortunately, we don't have any more uh, from Greece here on our panel. It's like not Greece. 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 It's, 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 it's no, no, it is clear that the Greek government, all the Greek government bear a huge responsibility. But the shock therapy has been almost a suicide for the union as such. OK, let's listen to a couple more first time voters, uh, Petra de Sutter will come to you after we've heard from Hanna from Slovenia and Jan, who's from Croatia. I'd like to know whether you'll continue to encourage young people to study abroad and increase scholarship money. Will you encourage them to meet people from other countries? I would also stress the importance of maintaining peace and freedom and improving employment opportunities for young people in Croatia. 
And uh, Croatia currently has a youth unemployment rate of 23%. Petra de Suta, what would you do if you really had the power to change things there? Yes, well, first of all, uh, we have the youth guarantee, of course, and it should be implemented, should be absolutely mandatory in all member states to be implemented. And we think that the European uh, Social Fund can be used um, for the Youth Employment Initiative, which has already been put in place. I, if I'm correct, 8.8 .8 billion euros have been uh, directed to that and this is very good but we need mechanisms so that if there is an economic crisis where young people are affected in the first place immediately funding from the social right fund now they is don't directed have an, econo an immediate economic crisis still we have 23 percent youth unemployment what do you suggest well to increase um, all measures needed to get this uh, this youth guarantee in place which is making sure the young people after four months of graduation or unemployment immediately have the possibility to have a job, further training or education. This must be put in place much more effectively than it has been. And one of the reasons why it's not been successful in all member states is because in many member states it has not been accompanied with social measures that are imp imp important to make this uh, a realization. This is a priority uh, in terms of austerity. Youth unemployment is the first thing that we need to tackle. Mr. Beck, uh, was interrupted uh, earlier, yeah. so, but I think this probably goes in this, at least a direction where you can That's respond to what you were trying to say earlier, correct? That's Fair enough, and if I'm not going to be interrupted this time, I'd be more than We cannot content. guarantee that. Fine. <laughs> now, um, we've been hearing a great deal about the various investments programs here. I think it may be useful if I remind everyone uh, and our audience of uh, the ambitious program the European Union launched in 2000, namely the so-called Lisbon Agenda. I'm quoting, according to the Lisbon Agenda, Europe should become and I, I'm quoting uh, verbatim here, the most competitive and dynamic knowledge-based economy in the world by 2010, and the yardstick for both the US and East Asia. Europe has failed resoundingly. The euro What's is your, part of it. Uh, no, it's nothing to do with the euro. Or, or well, well, look, look Europe this isn't the yardstick. Of the will look, of our government. Europe is, is the low-growth region of the world. Only Japan is matching Europe's <laughs> low growth. But at a high level, at a high level. We need at a high level of stagnation. But mm. that wasn't the program outlined in 2000. Yeah. And I mean, if, and uh, what we've been listening, uh, what we've been hearing from these young voters is that they're obviously discontented. And the established policy of more state intervention, of inflating away the costs of bank rescue, uh, rescues and of saving yeah. a currency that yeah. has failed. Yeah. These this, policies, this these policies because, 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 yeah. have failed. This is, and this is the only, and the only, the why, only reason why, we have... If I may <laughs> just finish. May, yeah, that's I mean, why we can, are... Uh, you cannot, yeah, mon yeah. you cannot monopolize the show, huh? Yeah. No, I mean, but I'm we, just... We can answer. <laughs> you you have to interact that. with us. That's why we are not follow, uh, following the established policies of state intervention and keeping a currency union alive. That's okay. simply not it's working. Let's from Mr. We want to lower taxes. To ditch much... Europe but... because some of the policies have failed. Yeah, exactly. All of them. We need to change the policies to make, indeed, uh, co uh, Europe correspond to the aspirations of the citizens. But it's ridiculous to advocate that we should get rid of Europe. We need Europe. We need Europe in this interdependent and globalized world. We need the dimension of Europe where we can, through which we can uh, intervene to regulate, if to make the difference at the global no, level. If you say that the euro is the, the, the problem, it's, uh, it's not because we have too much of it. It's because we have yeah. a, Europe, uh, a European uh, financial union without a fiscal yeah. union. Let's talk about fiscal justice in Europe. And then... If you don't have, if you just have a financial union, a monetary union, without a fiscal union, without a political union, with this a proper is a construction budget, we need the Europe with a proper yeah, but, budget. We, 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 have, we, we have understood one thing that uh, I mean, uh, the gentleman here wants to destroy Europe, wants to destroy the eurozone, wants to get out of the European Union. I mean, it is, it is very clear. I, 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 I don't need to answer to him because the, the, his position is very clear. We would like to answer to the young, young people mm -hmm. who ask questions. And it is clear that we need a Europe which multiplies opportunities. And the, the, what was the way, for example, there is a, a big success story in Europe, which is Erasmus. 
Yeah. Uh, we yes. want to triple the, triple the budget mm -hmm. of Erasmus because we won't use Erasmus. Well, currently there's an accusation that Erasmus only benefits the privileged, the already no, privileged. Exactly. Yeah. And this is what I was saying. We want change. an Erasmus of a social inclusion. Yes. We want yes. an Erasmus of the people who cannot afford yes. without yeah. the family of to go around Europe. For. And this is why we need to triple the resources. Can Europe yes. afford this? Uh, uh, can course. Europe afford it? Of, of course. course. It's a choice. I mean, it why, is, of it course. is 0.4. We, we could we, have a we, proper budget. It is 0.4 of budget. the EU budget, no. the biggest success story of the Union. Nine billion people have yes. done it. Yes. If so, we triple the budget, it would be 27 million. Okay. I mean, no, these no, are so, the answers. So, I'm afraid it's everyone not if, believes it's not in if, the money tree. It's not yeah. if, it's not yeah. if because uh, you should know no. that in the European Parliament and the Commission, a lot of work has been done on increasing the budget exactly on this kind of policies that young people are waiting. Doubling. The Discovery EU. It needs to be decided. We, no. we propose yeah. to triple yes. the resources. So if we well. you know, to tell that and, and, to the and, Italian and, government and, you know, and French government, yeah, the, when current, they are going the current to, Italian yeah. government, when but they are I, going I, I remind to... you that my government, no, no. where I was minister, yes. we, we proposed okay. to multiply by 10 the okay. resources okay. of Erasmus. And, and if after we would actually the European fight, Commission yeah. and the European uh, Parliament. All right, so the British Parliament, you would say, order, order. You lost more than that because you lost it for Italia, it's 7% in Italy. So if it much more than me. Everybody, we're going to have to move on. Vision, effectively, <laughs> it is, it is no, if we it, it would is fun. Uh, Excuse us. For we'll come back to most policies, of that later on, but now we need to move on, EU. right? We do need to move on. There's plenty, of course, we could say about uh, the economic section. But, of course, the second part of our debate, something that's very much been a huge preoccupation for so many young people all around Europe and the world, the <clears> climate <throat> emergency. Uh, we can hear from first-time voter Christian. He's 21 and he is from Denmark. How can you be so unambitious when it comes to taking responsibility for our future? Why do you let member states get away with doing so little to make the switch to renewables? Why aren't you doing more to create a future we can all live in? Yeah, Ms. Uh, Gomez, you were part of the yeah. grand coalition in the European Parliament, the Social Democrats and the Conservatives with the That exists European... in Germany, not here. People's Party. Well, it's unofficial. That's why I said it's unofficial. And uh, clear accusation here from a from a young man that you're not doing enough. Why aren't you doing enough? I understand that young people are very uh, unhappy. Uh, we recently received uh, Greta Thunberg, yeah, and she's right. There is no Planet B. We absolutely need to be serious about fighting uh, climate change and mitigating the, the, the consequences, the adapting to a, a less consumism uh, type of life. Yes, let and me repeat that, the question. Why aren't you doing only... more? Doesn't the we parliament in the European care... Parliament... Doesn't the parliament we do. care enough about the those The parliament things? cares and does and has well, been quite uh, the, proactive, the, but the problem is actually in the council where the, these things are blocked. No, the parliament yeah. has been quite ambitious and my colleague actually can tell yes, you much more to about be that. Honest, to be honest, there are already three European commissions putting forward legislation to tackle the climate change issue very consistent in the last five years we have the ETS the so Asian we're doing enough scheme. you're doing enough that's what no, you're saying. I'm not saying we are doing no. enough but we have taken huge steps mm. what we need now we have to keep an eye on how these policies are implementing because they are just adopted but we can't say we we didn't do anything it has to be said there was a, a bit of a health check on how Europe is doing at the end of 2018 of... and no European member state is on track to meet its yeah, Paris commitment it's true and it should be not a lost opportunity next week in CBU at the summit, because at that summit of the heads of states, they should uh, redecide on the national determined contribution so that in New York, when we go and report at the United Na Nations, to present each member state with its national determined contribution. And it's not on the agenda, or at least I haven't seen it. So it's true that at the council level, yes. there yeah. is a reluctancy well, to, to tackle uh, more decisively this Let's issue. hear from our Greens Group representative, yes. Petra de Souta. You've got much more ambition ambitious Absolutely. climate goals yeah. uh, than currently. But is this really achievable? We heard from the oh, Extinction absolutely. Rebellion that they want to, for example, uh, get rid of petrol and diesel cars within a couple of decades. Can Europeans really accept that? Well, um, the cost of doing nothing will be much higher than the cost that we need now to make that transition. And I wouldn't call it a cost, but a investment. It's an opportunity. It has been calculated that greening the economy will provide jobs. So people mm -hmm. that only believe in economy mm -hmm. should also be convinced that this is the right thing to do. We mm -hmm. can innovate and set the example all over the world. But as Greens in the Parliament, we have been most ambitious, that's true. And we have calculated our plans. We can show they are realistic. Even the Commission has now said that we can go to 50% emission reduction by 2030. We want 
to go to 60%. We have calculated that we will have to do that if we want to achieve the Paris Agreement uh, levels. So we can do more and it shouldn't cost to people, mm. to normal people, should be done yes, in a socially the acceptable the green, way. On a European level, the Greens are not set to gain any seats at the moment, if we believe the polls. Now, a party that is set to gain is the AFD from just Germany. Just an idea. What do you... <laughs> let, let me... Uh, hang yeah. on a second here. Let me... So, since your party is most likely going to be rather successful in the upcoming elections for the European Parliament, what are your plans uh, to say... The planet. Well, we've heard a great deal, a great many professions of faith here. Um, now, I'd like to introduce some logic into this discussion. No, no, uh, no, 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 no. They're not professional faith, they're I mean, very concrete. Don't don't faith. Faith. It's science, come on. Let's hear from Mr. Beck. <laughs> well, we haven't history. heard much scientific evidence. Oh, as far as I know, no, 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 no. <laughs> here, I'm not denying any either. Um, uh, as far as I know, Germany, for example, is responsible for 2% of CO2 emissions. I don't know the figures for the EU as a whole. Let's say they are around 10%. On that basis, I'd, ask, I'd like to ask a number of questions. If it's around 10% and it could be 8 or 15, then the question is, what, do you, uh, uh, what effects do European policies on climate change have on world emission but levels? But is that an argument to do nothing? Well, it and has to have an effect, <laughs> otherwise but, it's mere symbolism. But it no. has an effect. Can I give it an has, example? China now has been yeah. uh, installing its own ETS system. Yeah. The world is looking at Europe. You can, we can set an example, we can innovate and we can set standards it's that true, will be followed we, we elsewhere. We are not well, sure so, uh, what China is doing, if I may, yeah, but correct. nevertheless, I would say that something, uh, it was mentioned, it is an opportunity for new business models and for a new economy which is more sustainable. Mm -hmm. and if we take the Germany's case, I don't know about the percentage responsible, but I know they are burning a lot of coal and this has to stop because there are alternatives like renewables, as it was mentioned, like a new kind of economy which is more sustainable and carbon free. Mm. And this is the future and the young people are, are asking for that. They are indeed <laughs> asking for it and not only when it comes to saving um, saving the planet from climate change, but also when it comes to other topics. I mean, the European Union often sees itself as a front runner. For example, take the ban on, well, a number of single-use plastics that was enacted at mm -hmm. the beginning of this year. So that should be enough, shouldn't it? Well, our first-time voters have a different view. Hear out <coughs> Fabian from Germany. Thank you for the ban on plastic straws. That's great. But we could do a lot more. In Sweden, they plant three new trees for every one that is cut down. Why can't we do that everywhere in the EU? That would be a great idea, right? <laughs> Fabian from Germany speaking there. Sandra Goodsi, I'd like to come to you. Uh, he's talking about pan-European environment initiatives, yeah. much more harmony. You're representing a transnational list, a group that wants more Europe, closer ties. Uh, is this something that is really achievable, given the very different uh, member yes, state it is. demands? Yes, it, it is. We all know what we have to do. Uh, there are the Paris Agreement, and we have to reach those objectives. To reach the objective, we, we need to give ourselves more financial means in the Union and more political clout on the global scene. This is why, let me say, we propose to create a finance uh, climate bank to redirect uh, private saving on projects which uh, meet the uh, target of the Paris Agreement. And we think that we have to play more as United Act on the global scene because, as I was saying, we are... Uh, we are the leader and we, may, we must remain the leader on an issue which makes the difference for the young generation, you which talk is about, fight against yes. climate change. You talk change. about putting more resources. More I talk it's about a, more resources, that, but I, mean, I talk better, about the more rational use of money. It's a more rational use of money. It's a more rational use of If you ask money. the question, you have to, to uh, wait for my answer, because the question was to me. And so the resources are for private saving, redirect private saving on sustainable projects, creating a new finance climate bank, and also defending our interests in the world. We want to introduce a carbon tax on the products yeah. which are made outside Europe and which do not respect the environmental standard. This is a way to, uh, to push also the other partners to play by the rules and to play by the objective. Can, of the I would like to go to Ms. Valet. There there are are some if ideas, I may, yeah. I have a question directly it's to true. Ms. Valet as the working. head, as the chair of the yeah. Environment We've Committee of the European Parliament. Financing. Hear me out just a second. Yeah. We know there's pressure from the streets. We mentioned Greta Thunberg earlier. Mm -hmm. How many visits from lobbyists do you get to say, let's say the car lobby, 
we can't do this because otherwise our business yeah, but is you, in trouble. You raised, uh, you raised uh, the plastic, for example, and we didn't get any visits, so you should know that there is a huge acceptance that we have to cut on plastic because With the plastic With a lot of exceptions, in... same thing. How yes, many visits goes... do you get from lobbyists, let's say, from the plastic not, producing not industry? Not so many, and that the question is not that the industry, visits, no, is what, just, just what you're doing idea. according that, to the let's, industry. Let's hear her out just a second, Just please, a second, please. Anna. Uh, the truth is that the industry is recognizing the problems and they are ready mm -hmm. to find solution to act on that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the same thing uh, with the emissions on cars, with uh, uh, the emission generally on uh, it, under the ETS, with the heavy industry. It's the same with the plastics. And uh, you know the problem is really huge. We took uh, legislative steps, but it has to come also from the industry and the society. We can't they do this. They probably won't do it uh, by the themselves. So isn't mm. I, I would like to repeat the question. Okay. <laughs> How much pressure do you get from industry? I wouldn't a say lot. we got pressure from the oh, industry to not to act on this subject. I myself, I haven't <laughs> seen it. I mean, of course, it's natural to have debate with everyone who is involved, to find together solutions. But I've uh, re I read exactly today that, for example, the cosmetic industry is thinking to taking absolutely all the microplastics, uh, small mm. beds in uh, the cosmetics, uh, voluntarily out. And they so are just looking for other can, solutions. Just, yes, yes, I, I, I would like to say something on this. Just generally. speaking about industry, I'd like to particularly yes. ask you. <laughs> I, your, I'm very your, happy to. Your party's targets, uh, you say, would help create 80,000 jobs yes. in Belgium. Uh, I mean, in what time frame is 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 that really well, achievable? If, if you if you want to achieve um, our goals by 2030, by that time, in achieving them, we will have created all these jobs. This this can be calculated, and it's not the Greens that say that. It's a lot of experts that say that. But can I say something about all the, the good intentions that I hear on the other side? Um, EU lacks coherence in its policy. It is still subsidizing fossil fuels a lot, as we know. It is not but looking it's into states, the Petra, climate. Who are doing that. Well, so yes, I, uh, but I just that is Europe. Germany, uh, yes, with the coal. Uh, by one hand, we are adopting also, legislation to cut the CO2, and by the other hand, we are um, can, restarting the Can I give an example the, the from the coal? Parliament? I will give an example is from the Belgian Parliament. Is it Belgian also no, using let's coal? Let's hear the example. Let's no, from the Parliament, um, uh, as you know, there is a negotiation to start up the, the TTIP discussions again. The Greens have uh, put on the table an amendment to ask that we ask the USA to agree again on the Paris Agreement before we start that. Yeah, that amendment are, was not carried. Exactly our proposal. And this is why Emmanuel Macron was the only one in the European <laughs> Council to oppose the opening of the yes, negotiation but exactly it, for this. It was, it so was see, voted in down the new with parliament, one vote instead of saying, in the like, parliament. Let me say this. Instead of saying one, this side, the other side, in the new European Parliament, why don't we build up good alliances by project? Yeah, and if we agree we are, we on are. the fight against... We that we are. Uh, well, we I mean, from that. your party, I, I see Mr. a lot, no, 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 a lot, no, no, a lot of slowing slow down, down on this. this. So, I mean, I wouldn't say that the EPP can Gozzi, be a leader on the fight against climate change. I, Mr. Beck is rather give me silent on this topic. You have no idea. You're refraining? Is it not interesting to the AFD, this topic? Not at all. I'm just refraining from interrupting. Uh, uh, contrary to general practice. Now, um, the young European who posed the question wanted to plant trees. Uh, I should like, just like to say that the German government, I'm afraid, for example, is cutting down lots of trees in order to install its um, windmills all around, the all around the country, replacing uh, woodland <laughs> with industrial landscapes. And then, as a second point, if I may, I've said already that many of these uh, vague ideas here uh, uh, will be rather symbolic unless we can establish two things. First of all, they must have a meaningful impact on emission levels worldwide. And in addition, and that links up with what's been uh, uh, said already, they must be able to set an example which, sh which will change behavior elsewhere. If I can so just, if I, if I may just say, if I, really if I, a misstep. So do you disagree with your own party's line on that? No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm merely outlining, uh, outli do you agree uh, outlining with it. The need for emissions reduction, or do you disagree? Because your party says climate protection is a misstep. The climate's always changed since the world existed. I don't think that's official party policy at all. What we are saying that's is that... That's in the that, manifesto. No, well, that is... You've 
quoted very selectively. Naturally, we are not <laughs> well, necessarily... Very, well, that's true. Maybe selective, but if very clear, can, your position. I can tell you here, if we receive satisfactory answers to those two questions, and if, it, in addition, it is established that that is not socially divisive and that it's economically affordable, then we can talk about everything. But we'd you like to see, hear yeah. rational you can answers see, first. You can see this is a hot topic, and uh, quite frankly, we could spend a whole show on it uh, without a problem, pro probably a couple of shows. But since we want to hear more from the first-time voters, let's bring one more thing, which is sort of the overarching topic of this European election, which is how many seats will the so-called right-wing populists gain and in which way will they be able to change maybe the European Union or block proceedings in the European Parliament? Um, here's Dori from Hungary, a country that has uh, been governed by one of those parties, the Fidesz parties, for nearly a decade. I'd like to know what they think about the fact that right-wing parties are gaining ground across Europe. Is the European Union at risk from the rise of the far right and populism? Dori from Hungary speaking there. Now, uh, one European figure who's very much set himself up uh, front and centre as uh, an enemy of populists is the French president Emmanuel Macron. We've heard from him. He said that he sees this as a battleground between populists and progressives. That brings me quite logically to Sandro Gozzi. Uh, you're running on Emmanuel Macron's ticket, as I've said, but people are voting for these parties, which are being labelled populists. They're gaining in their vote share. Uh, surely that means that these parties are providing answers that the more traditional and no, more mainstream they're not, parties they're aren't. Not. No, they're providing questions. Yes. <laughs> And uh, sometimes they are the right question. For example, the Brexiters, or they, say, they were saying, let's take back control. And it is true that today politics needs to take back control on transnational issues. Things about fight against climate change, things about migration, things, about, things to fight against terrorism. But to take back control, the wrong, they, they provided the wrong answer because they said, we get out of the union, we go back to nationalistic policies. If we want to take yeah, back control on this issue, we need to build up the Europe that we don't have. Yeah. And we need also a sovereign and democratic Europe because the real sovereignty we can build up on these transnational <laughs> issues only at European level. Well, Gunnar Beck, uh, you're based in London where you're a professor. Uh, you've campaigned in favour of Brexit. I know that you want to see the European Parliament done away with, in fact. Uh, is, is there a clash here that uh, you believe your party, your side of the argument, can win? We want more democracy. Uh, the European, European Parliament is directly elected. It is directly elected, but it doesn't have a demos. I'm here oh, yes, you know. at oh, one. I'm, I'm here at nil. one with the, Euro with the German Constitutional Court, which in two uh, uh, judgments has stated that the European Parliament has insufficient democratic legitimacy. Now, no, my possible. position on that is the following. The European Parliament undoubtedly pays more regard and articulates popular views more than the European Commission or the European Court of Justice. It does so less well than national parliaments either do or could do. Therefore, <clears throat> you're absolutely correct, that's in our party program, but I'd like to uh, uh, cut the wings of both the European Commission and the Court of Justice before we abolish the European Parliament. No, yes, well, and we... why the party, uh, your party in the uh, UK, is standing for these elections for the European Parliament? They should say, OK, we do not recognise the u uh, usefulness or, uh, well, the, the demos of the European Parliament, so we are not standing the for demos elections. Look, look, there, look, look, but they are standing there's... for elections. No, that's, I'm afraid that's it's, no, it's uh, that's no contradiction. If I may just answer this question... Well, Anna Gomez has no. been trying to make her point for a couple <laughs> well, of minutes. It's 500 million citizens who want solidarity, who understand that for the kind of transnational challenges we face, we need Europe. There's no way the old nation state can actually, well, provide for regulation on the digital, for instance, or, for instance, on fighting offshores, fighting tax havens. We absolutely need to act European. And, uh, uh, of course, the European Parliament has already demonstrated since the Lisbon Treaty that it has clout. It can increase it that clout. It doesn't have the right of initiative. The interaction with the Commission. It's so is 
been proving useful, for instance, in the tax area, uh, that lots of things that were done in this last mandate. Anna Gomez, I put it to you that the European Parliament cannot propose its own laws. It no, amends but, but it laws can, coming from the European Commission. But it can influence the Commission to do it. And that's what we did, for instance, with our inquiry committees on LuxLeaks, on uh, uh, Panama Papers, on Paradise Papers. We actually yeah. led the Commission okay. to take the initiatives on regulation but that were actually and yeah. more is needed. Yes. Just could, could I say something in answer to the question? I think that the Brexit has been a wake-up call as well and an opportunity. So if you ask, is the European Union in danger because of the right-wing populists, I would say, well, they are a threat and we ne mm -hmm. need to take a, the, the, the question seriously that there is. Okay. But they're not a danger because a lot of people now understand how important yeah. it is. We were afraid after the Brexit that mm -hmm. other countries would do the same. Nobody now speaks well, let's about bring that. Well, let's bring in another first all yes. this information to bring in another first time with I, uh, let's, just let's before we move to on with the debate. <laughs> These are the people who are putting the questions to you. We have Lucas. He's from Lithuania. Uh, he's concerned about Euroscepticism around the EU. Take a listen. How do you intend to sway people away from Euroscepticism? How will you convince people that deeper European integration is the path to take? An easy one. Mr. Well, Gorzi, how are you going to do that? We, we Your party is probably I mean, the one that's trying to do this yes, most here at the table. But we need, as I was saying, we need a sovereign democratic Europe because the sovereignty today means to change things for the common good, to have the power to change things, to reshape things, to, to, to achieve common objectives. And on certain issues, for example, uh, govern, governance of global <laughs> finance, governance of digital, it only a European Union is the right actor, but it must be also democratic. But what about this the Europeans feel that they haven't been listened to? For example, on migration. Yeah. Well, on migration, it is uh, the lack, lack of yes. European solidarity, Absolutely. and it is yeah. the unacceptable position of people like Viktor Orban of the European yeah. People's Party, or of Kaczynski, yes. or Salvini. of other countries, mm. of Matteo Salvini, who, uh, to, uh, uh, facing a phenomenon which he can handle only together, they decide not to play by solidarity. It is easy. But they no, listen. they are nationalists. They are European with the European money. And they are nationalists when it comes to refugees and solidarity. But that's a, this Mr. is Beck, not acceptable. Mr. Beck, you just said an important sentence. You said, because they listen. Indeed. So they have now, the right. latest polls show that the top topic for European voters is not migration. Only 15% said that. Yeah. So maybe you're sailing the wrong ship. Well, I think uh, many, uh, I can't speak for uh, each and every uh, uh, patriotic liberal party in Europe, but um, uh, uh, my position is that we are trying to listen wherever it's possible and where we are trying to reason wherever it's possible. It's not even true that we'd like to abolish the EU here and now. We are in favor of well-tempered cooperation. No. We'd like to leave it where it has manifestly failed in the areas well, of migration you and in the euro. But we are all together, yes. all together in favour of it, where hate. history has been, a more, uh, has been a more felicitous one. No, yeah, you've been it, using it, it, migration can, to instill hate and to uh, instill fear in people. Look, migration people is going to be an economic are disaster with many otherwise. Of the policies of the EU, namely on jobs, on the, yes, because I, of the austerity policies, and that helps as well to explain the populism. It's not by chance that I'm the Gilets Jaunes in France well, this has the a... tax question at the top of their... Uh, yes. of their it's right. the tax it's it's and they are right. migrants the getting is, into Europe are refugees. The only refugees. way to address these problems is by solidarity. Um, it's through no, European... No, it's by it's observing, observing the law. It's by fundamental yes. uh, rights. It's to, by to, respect of the rule of law. That the way, is yes. the name and, of the game of the EU. And to go for a social Europe. It will just have one last word from Petra Desota before we move on to our final section. One last word. Exactly. If we want to fight proposed, the populism yeah. uh, as we hear it uh, here, well, is we it unaffordable, to, as Mr. Beck says? We should give the people, um, we should give them protection. Europe has been a neoliberal project much too long mm. and far away from the citizens. It's good for the companies and the multinationals. We need to give it back to the people and give them social protection okay. and strengthen the social agenda. And we are an aging agenda. society. Well, just we need new blood. It's not just about refugees, it's also about sure. migrants. But, but, but the Europe that they want, the, uh, we, the they say fighters. Europe of nations, huh? because uh, our gentleman here is allied of Matteo Salvini, is going to strike alliance with Marine Le Pen, and they talk about Europe of nations. But you do agree, we, the, you the do Europe agree we have, that the laws the need to be observed. It is the Europe we have. It is the Europe of the veto. 
It's the Europe of unanimity in the European Council. This is Europe of nations. Okay. This is Europe which fails. We this are... is the answer. It's very clear. Exactly. Your Europe is a failure. Absolutely. It's already demonstrated, which is a failure. We are yeah. coming to the end of the show. I'm going to have to move us on. Just time left for our flash round, where I will ask each of you to be very brief. Uh, we'd like to answer our next first-time voter in just one sentence, maximum 10 seconds each, <coughs> and we will cut you off. Uh, so have a listen to Chiara from Spain. If I had to say something to a European politician, I would ask him to please stop thinking about his own interests and to think about citizens and the people. My question to a politician in Brussels would be, does he remember why he ran for office? Very good. Ana Gomez, we'll come to you first. Very much so, and that's why I fight for against corruption, for human rights, for respect for the rule of law, for European solidarity. And that means a better Europe, more Europe. Petra Dissita. I'm a medical doctor. I went into politics and in ecology because I was worried about the environment on the effect of environment on the health of our people. And climate change now is the number one priority. It's for these young people that we are doing our job. And if we're not doing it for them, then we should quit politics. I want a Europe which multiplies securities, opportunities and protections. And I think that only a sovereign democratic Europe can provide the answer to get out of the status quo and to answer to the fears of too many people around the continent. Adina, you want to in? Well, I want a successful Europe where every young people would feel um, having a happy life in his region, in his uh, hometown, in other European countries. And we are on the track to do that. And we have done a lot of work in this direction. And I think the question was a bit populistic. <laughs> Well, I'm not even elected, so I'd better not forget uh, why, why I'm seeking election. Well, I'm seeking election so that we uh, listen more and I'd like to see more democracy, uh, more rule of law in Europe and also more economic success. So, Gunnar Beck, it's your lucky day. You not only were last in our last flash round, you're the first in our next flash round. So I would ask you just to answer with one word the following question. What is, to you, the most important European value? Democracy. Freedom. Solidarity. Solidarity as well. Solidarity. There we go. <laughs> There's no solidarity without freedom, democracy and the rule of law. <laughs> well, Anna Gomez and all of the rest of our panel, Petra de Sita, Sandra Godzi, Adina Joana Valian and Gunnar Beck, thank you all very much for taking part. That is the end of our programme. And thanks to you as well for watching. And of course, don't forget the, the actual elections that take place from the 23rd of May to the 26th of May, either on our uh, colleagues' channel, François Cat, or, of course, Deutsche Welle. Thank you for being with us today.